I have never seen an animated movie like this in my life. Does this <laughs> style of animation have a name to you guys? Oh gosh, you know the marketing team at Sony asked us this and we struck out yeah. about a year ago. <laughs> it's a new thing that hasn't been done. I mean, it, it, from the very beginning we were like, can we make a movie that feels like you're walking inside of a comic book? And everybody at, at Sony, uh, Justin Thompson, the production designer, Danny Dimion, who's a uh, VFX supervisor, were like, yes, but it's not gonna be easy. And it took us years to figure out the process of, of both CG and 2D hand-drawn animation and all of these like comic book textures and, and designs woven in into something that feels like every frame is a painting. Uh, I have a pitch. Yeah. Cinemation. Oh, I like it. But, but it sounds like, like cinema. Saying, it sounds like uh, saying yeah, like, like, like it's See how like hard difficult saying, this is? It's very hard. Yeah. It's very hard. But it the was next really time hard. I see you, I'll come up with some sort Please. Of Please. Yeah. Let's workshop this. It'll be terrible, but I'll do it. <laughs> um, with this new style of animation, is there anything new that's added to the process, whether it's a new job position, a new tool you didn't have before, anything like that? Well, well, we, the, the, we, we uh, our, someone on our team had to write new software, mm -hmm. and and we kept saying we want you to break the systems. I want the server to melt down. Mm -hmm. I want people to like not know uh, how to use these tools anymore. And we succeeded. Right, and even like the, the lighting department was making lighting that was half tone dots and having how do you figure out how that moves in three dimensions and shadows that were hatch marked sort of things and textures that were paintings. And every step of the way, every step of the process, like the hair had to be stylized. The cloth had to have a, have a, a limited comic book style movement. Everybody in each department was inventing a new process along the way, so there wasn't a chapter of this thing that wasn't trying to shake things up. Yeah. So you guys pretty much already announced that we're going to get more of these types of movies. Given how long it takes to animate such little bits of this compared <laughs> yes. to any other traditional <laughs> movie, I mean, what should people expect in terms of a timeline? Because I imagine a lot of time is going to have to go into those new movies. Well, it's still really early, and you know the movie hasn't come out yet, so we're not uh, gonna count any chickens at One, this point. One, two, three, five. <laughs> um, but we're not doing that. Oh, but, we're not doing. No, that. we're not. That was thank you. Chicken counting. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but the but we, obviously the idea of the multiverse opens up a lot mm -hmm. of possibilities. Infinite, you might say, possibilities. So uh, it's really exciting to think about what could be. Um, and there are a lot of things that really are engaging to us, but it's you know it's still really early. I really can't stop thinking about all the possibilities, especially mm -hmm. because the idea of anyone can wear the mask. It's not just mm -hmm. a throwaway line that's mm -hmm. said or a little button at the end. It's something that kind of reverberates throughout the entire film and mm -hmm. that gets seared in your brain, and you really can't <laughs> stop thinking about the possibilities when you walk away. Oh, that's great. That's exactly that what was I wanted. The plan. Success. Count those chickens right now. Yes. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about assembling the team of directors here? Because mm -hmm. we have three directors, some haven't worked on a feature, some have had different <laughs> positions on an animated movie before. What made the three of them the right group? Well, you know, they. Uh, this is such a gargantuan task. You need people with all kinds of different superpowers, and each of those guys, you know, has something to offer that we don't know how to do. The performances that Bob Persichetti put together um, with these characters are just like, I put them up against anything that anybody's doing. They're so human, they're funny, they're, they're, they've got so much personality. And, and observation. And, and, and like, all those guys, like, they all have soul. And, mm -hmm. and, and any time you would watch the reels, even a scene that like, I, I wrote it and it was way too long and it didn't work, like you would watch and be like, oh, they feel for these people. They're, they're like diving into the idiosyncrasies and the, and the, the observation of each of them. So, you know, they're all really ambitious. That's the mm -hmm. thing that ties them together. And they recognize that one another has, oh, you know, strength. yeah, has have, have all of these strengths. And Peter is an amazing uh, uh, artist and, and choreographer of action in a way that, that is so easy to understand what's happening and you never lose sight of the goal and it's really inventive and stylish and he, uh, was just like a rock throughout the whole process. He's also and, a secret sweetheart yes. who's really sensitive and thinking about like that little thing that's gonna make you engage even deeper with the mm -hmm. picture. And Rodney was a you know, guy that we've worked with many times in the past. We worked with him on 22 Jump Street and lots of other things. And he was someone that we brought in to help out with the script while we were extra busy. <laughs> um, and, and, and then he was so helpful and so uh, uh, got what we were all going for that we were like and thought that we could aim higher Yeah, we were like well would you like to come join the party and he was like yeah let's do it and and it was a little bit untraditional but that's what this movie is about a bunch of people coming together 
towards a common goal, and they're all different, and they all and have since something since we all say. agreed on the kind of movie we wanted to make, it made it work. Yeah, they can imagine it going horribly wrong <laughs> if people, someone wanted to make a gritty coal miner drama, you know, and they're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, even just with all the little details here, yeah. you take such big swings and big risks where one little thing could have gone wrong and it wouldn't have come together as well, but everything is just firing at peak level and <laughs> all melds so well. Um, we know you guys, mm -hmm. we know the three directors, and we know all of the wonderful actors who voice these characters, but I'm always curious to hear about an unsung hero on an animated movie, because there's so many different departments and so many people that work on these things. So if you had to name one for this production, who would it be? Well, I think it's gotta be Justin Thompson, yeah. because you know Justin was the first call that we made you know, before we even started coming up with the story. And he's a production designer we worked with on, on Cloudy and, and, and the sequel, and he just knows in his bones uh, what this movie looks like, and and he elevated every step that that we took, and it, and it, you know, it. He was pushing as hard as any of us. Right, and we were like, we wanted to break, we wanted to go as far as you possibly can, we wanted to feel like nothing you ever seen before, and he was like, well, I'm gonna take it even farther, and it was. <laughs> Uh, it was really inspiring to see and, and how much passion he brought to it and everybody, I mean there's hundreds of people working on this thing um, and everybody contributed creatively and yeah. it was... I mean it, like 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 even in the DI suite, like right. what Justin and Natasha did at the end just to like sweeten everything and make sure that the, 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 the amount of color the movie escalates, I mean there's just like a lot of fine detail in it, and right down to the, like the sound mix, mm -hmm. that like the, the sound mix is so sensitive, it's super loud and super quiet, the dynamics are out of control and, and it just went that way through every department. To wrap up, we do a show on Collider called Collider FYC, where we get to celebrate all the things we're gonna be talking about through award season. And again, you don't wanna count chickens, <laughs> but we're constantly talking about what the definition of an Oscar movie is, what it means just in general, but also to you personally. So I wanted to pose that question to you guys. What does the term Oscar movie mean to you? I mean, I think that the, at, at its best, you know, Oscar celebrates excellence and, and things that resonate with people and, and mean something to them, you know? And I don't. I think that um, transcends genre, and uh, and it's it, you know you know it when you see it when you walk out of the theater and you're really thrilled. Yeah, and, and it can get kind of crazy, but at the end of the day, there's something kind of cool about people getting together and say, "Hey, let's celebrate movies that are that are really special and have something uh, something new to say." Yeah, so. the remarkable thing about it is whether it, like whether you agree or disagree with the outcomes. You have a national, sometimes international conversation about art that lasts months. That's like amazing. <laughs>